Hi, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate, I think, 4 <laughs> demo for the piece I call Identity Crisis. It's actually kind of Procreate 4, Procreate 5. So I painted this about nine months ago and was never really happy with it. Um, it's got kind of a very different story, uh, the creation of it, than a lot of the stuff that you see on this channel. Um, it's named Identity Crisis because... First of all, it spans a lot of years. The creation of this weirdly spans a lot of years and the kind of, you know, change that artists go through over time and, and how that impacts their work. Um, and then also the fact that I could never really settle on what I really wanted the final look of this thing to be. Um, or, or at least the fact that I just felt like it never truly got interesting. And then I think in recent light, although this is totally accidental, um, it's a bit of an identity crisis of Guile and sort of what he represents. And then maybe even like him as a character and, and how he would maybe feel about like current things going on, right? Um, Guile, in case you're wondering, is from a video game called Street Fighter. Most people who watch this probably already know that. Um, he is my main character. I play as him in any installation that he is in. Um, and it's kind of funny because the things that I like about Guile, I don't think are the things that Guile projects. Uh, my favorite thing about Guile is his effectiveness in his simplicity. And I like that for the longest time, the guy only had two special moves uh, forever, right? Like until until five and they started mixing it up a bit. So I think that um, I like his simplicity. I like that he kind of um, makes do with what tools he has. Uh, and that's uh, really appealing to me. I think that that's appealing to the way I feel um, about how I try to handle things. And so the character really resonates with me in that way. Uh, I am not inclined to get an American flag tattoo on my shoulder, but um, I like the way Guile is also usually portrayed. He's usually pretty honorable and um, a badass and all those things. So Guile is pretty cool. Now, what is, what is the story of the creation of this piece? So you can see that there's a sketch that's getting turned on and off that was drawn in traditional media. So I did that a long time ago. I mean, it was probably eight years ago, I want to say. Um, that I could have that completely wrong, but that's that's how I, I think it was, how long ago I think it was. Um, he was drawn around the same time where I did a series of Street Fighter drawings. In fact, I've done some of those and painted those uh, here on the channel. In fact, the Rose that I did, the Zangief that I did, the uh, Karin Kanzuki that I did, um, there were a handful of them that I drew all around the same time, and then I slowly started adding color to them in the last year or so. So that's when the drawing started. Then the painting started, like I said, what was that, like nine months ago, give or take? And it was around, let's see, when was it? I'm actually literally looking at my art station right now. It was about a year ago. I think it was actually a little longer than a year ago when I started really messing with the turpentine brush in Procreate, which has really kind of like powered a lot of what I've done um, here on this channel for the last year, just because it's been fun and it's it's been it's like the challenge fun, taking me into new areas, cool stuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And Guile here was painted with that old turpentine brush. That's why when you saw the flats going in, it was slightly messier than the more recent stuff because the more recent stuff is done with my new turpentine brush that I built that it has just some fun qualities to it. Lately though I have been going back to the old one just to get a little bit of roughness uh, in the paintings. So that's what this was uh, done with. The methods that I'm using here I think are going to feel pretty familiar. You're going to see essentially kind of like an AO form shadow pass. You're going to see a cast shadow pass. He's got a big dark inside of him because the light's coming from the back. And I kind of just go through that process. So from a painting perspective, what you're seeing is some multiply layers over flats. You're seeing some painting and some smudging and some erasing in order to get the look that I'm going for. The AO pass, the AO-esque pass uh, is the softest of, the, of all of it with the lighting. Um, and then we've got the harder shadows for when the direct light comes in. There'll also be some... Uh, highlights and just some just basically more layers to support the dimension of the character thing I want to highlight regarding the title of it identity crisis is um, it, like I said it sort of in 
uh, not inadver- inadvertently, that's the word I'm looking for, it sort of inadvertently implies kind of what Guile looks like he's going through here. Um, it really does kind of, I think, capture that mood. However, the real inspiration for calling it Identity Crisis is a theme that you're going to see throughout this piece is that I can never really get it to a place where I'm happy with it, which is why I think I did eventually post the yellow background version on Instagram, but I've never posted this in any more, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of long-term format, like on DeviantArt or ArtStation or someplace where it gets posted and it doesn't just kind of get lost to time. That's because I think that the original sketch worked as an original sketch because it's just kind of like this little vignetted moment of guile there and it was done on like a fairly small piece of paper. I had this smaller sketchbook at the time and that's when I did it. Um, and it just kind of worked as this like little drawing. But once I started painting it, it felt like there wasn't, I don't know, kind of enough going on. Now, this is using my uh, 8 inches by... 12 inches crop that I use on most things. Sorry, in this case, 12 by 8, not 8 by 12. Um, and I, I do think that there might be something to be said for the crop that could improve it. Um, but at the time, this is what I was working with. And I, I do like the idea of kind of a slightly landscape uh, dimensioned piece and a, a figure just kind of sitting in there. But you can see right now at the stage that it's at, I'm going in and I'm working details. I'm trying to get the forms going and all that kind of stuff. At this point, there's no way of saying that I was like unhappy with it. This is still super foundational. And I feel like the, this is the phase where you're either happy or unhappy with the piece on like a constant basis. You're kind of fluctuating and you're working it right you're you're always trying to take a thing that isn't what you want it to be and get it to what you want to be that has peaks and valleys um, but you see we've got this kind of dark blue background I don't know why I originally went with a dark blue background but as time goes on you see that that background color is a big part of my dissatisfaction with the piece trying to figure out exactly what is the environment that Guile is in here? Um, is it graphical? Is he actually in a space? Um, like, what is the deal with this? And you guys know that I very rarely do backgrounds in my work. It's just not the thing that I am most inspired by, so I tend to leave them out when I'm doing work for fun. Uh, so I need to kind of answer that question, right? I need to say, is this a room that he's in? Am I going to fully paint a room? Am I going to put some sort of shadowy shit in the background to kind of hint at something? Am I just going to go with flat? Is he in a void? Is he against a wall? Like, what? what is the situation? And I think that these questions I could never truly reconcile while I was working on this piece. Um, I did reconcile it in a way that I think is okay enough to now make a video of it and talk about it. But I think the struggle is the more interesting thing to be talking about. You'll also notice that his shirt is fairly saturated and his hair is fairly saturated. His skin isn't too saturated. I mean, Guile's always been pretty pasty, um, but there is kind of this like muted quality and that might also be because the background is a little muted and the shadows aren't super intense. And it's kind of hard to detach myself from what I did today right before making this video from where I was in the mindset at the time. I think at the time I wanted to try and capture the solemn quality of this, which is one of the main reasons why he is backlit, lit from his back and his face is in shadow. But there was just something that was never quite jibing right. So uh, what you'll see eventually is the, I think the, the visual evidence of the identity crisis where you're gonna see the colors in the background change a bunch you're gonna see other aspects change a bunch you're gonna see me start bringing in some graphic elements to try and support the figure and try to bring some sort of a panache to the piece uh, it is it is acceptable well it's acceptable to do whatever the fuck you want in art but what I want to highlight here is that artists will sometimes have a grand plan and they will come in and they will execute it and it will be to the best of their ability and it was always with a certain intention and other times it will be kind of just fly by the seat of your pants and make stuff up as you go uh there it's it both of them are completely valid both routes are valid i know for some people it might be silly to have to mention that but there are a lot of artists out there i think especially artists that are at the beginning stages of their career or the beginning stage of, the, of their development that maybe start trying to i don't know let's just say overthink the whole thing right and really art is supposed to be uh i won't say organic but it's supposed to be 
whatever you want it to be, I think is the point I'm trying to make. So when I was in the middle of doing this, the reason I'm highlighting this is because when I was in the middle of doing this is like right now, it's a fairly natural, naturalistic painting. There is no particularly weird thing going on here. We haven't figured out what the background is yet, but it's a realistic color for a background to be. He's lit in a fairly realistic way in the context of what I usually do. But then when I start introducing the graphic elements, that's actually me clawing at what can I do to make this exciting because I'm not excited by it. And there, is, there are plenty of times in art, uh, both in the physical act of painting as well as in the creative process or like, like I work in games when you're making video games, when you're making a movie, when you're making whatever, where you've got something and you've followed the plan up until a certain point and then you're looking at it and thinking to yourself there's something not going on here we need to react we need to find the thing and so that means there's an exploration sometimes even buried within what was going to be a well-executed plan and i think that when you've got millions and millions of dollars riding on something in tons of people's careers it's best to figure out that plan as best as you can However, that's not always totally possible. Sometimes you get in the middle of something, everybody executed the plan perfectly, and something's not working. This happens a lot, right? That's, that's why art and entertainment and the, and the intersection of those things can be such a clusterfuck. Because you can see me here in this painting struggling to figure out what the secret sauce of this is. The same exact issue can happen in massive massive endeavors a small painting or a multi-million dollar movie or a multi-million dollar video game or whatever it is um, or everything in between can have the exact same problem and you need to kind of go into recovery mode and sometimes you come out the other side and everybody looks at it and they go oh my god this is perfect like this their vision must have been so clear and sometimes that's true and sometimes it's just not sometimes you have to do everything you can to find it again or find it for the first time. I mean, maybe you thought sometimes, I mean, we all know about this, right? Sometimes you start working on something that is a creative endeavor. And then in the middle of it, you actually realize that the thing that you thought made it cool and creative isn't what made it cool and creative. And you have to kind of pivot and start taking advantage of what you've now found out. So what you see me here is me trying to establish the light. This is me now saying, I've got this lit figure. Like, what's the point of this? What's the environment he's in? Um, I've got this kind of cool, bloomy thing around his face that looked cool, but it kind of didn't really make much sense right there. Um, I start trying to play with it, having some subsurface scattering and kind of encroaching on the face. Um, and now the background has gotten darker because I'm trying to kind of reconcile, well, if I've got this dark background and then I've got this kind of like lit part of his face, um, there, there needs to be some reason why like this is lit like is he in a dark room which by the way looking back on this this is pretty cool i do like this um this version of the painting is sort of lost to the process and i can really only see it again by going through this time lapse so here i start finding something that's exciting to me i start finding this super strongly colored background which is something that i do fairly often it's obviously something i like doing so i'm like okay well maybe this is breathing some new life into this piece i put the you, you can see i've got the blue bounce on his face so that's kind of keying into the fact that he's in a blue environment there's a yellow light lit on his back a bluish yellowish light it's kind of a mix it's kind of a mess um and then we've got the the blue bounce coming from the back you, you saw me turn off all the lighting layers that's because i was adjusting something in the flats stage just to adjust it something i didn't like i guess when i was working on it and then when you see these outline elements like this is me again saying okay i enjoy the merging of something that feels a little bit more rendered and something that feels graphic so let's start bringing that in to maybe again spice it up i'm trying to find something that excites me first because i'm the one who needs to finish the painting then i decide to put in these interior black lines which you've seen pop up i tried to do a little bit of chromatic aberration trickery which was before i really had a good way of doing that in procreate so it looked like shit um, i've got this outline that's colored and it transitions in the background and now we get to today right about here is where i opened up the file and said maybe i should finally like address this thing and then make a video out of it so i start messing with the background and of course i land on pink because pink is my favorite color and we start playing with this so what you can see here and i've slowed this way down now to try and capture all of this is we've got this pink background 
I've got this outline. I've eliminated the back outline. And now I'm trying to say like, okay, what can I do with this? So I start shifting all the shadows to be a little bit more purpley pink. Start bringing the character a little bit more into the scene. Um, I'm toggling things on and off, trying to figure out what I even had on this character in the first place. Uh, adding some additional black outlines, trying to figure out what's going to work and what isn't going to work what will make me happy. And I decide this whole acid palette is a little bit better. So I saturate up his skin, his tank top is made to be a little bit more intense, his hair is even made to be a little bit more intense, and now we've got kind of a palette that's working with that pink. And the whole thing feels like it's a little bit more acid and a little bit, almost like a poster, like a really stylish poster type thing. This is the end of that exploration. So what I wanted to really talk about here was that whole thing of being lost in your piece, trying to find something that makes you exciting, and then also just like that cross section, uh, or that intersection I should say, of creative endeavor and project and scale and the fact that like it's all art and you need to find that thing that makes you happy and makes the thing you're producing exciting and that's not a straight line all the time. Sometimes it is. Some of the stuff you guys see me do here on the channel is a perfectly straight line because it's me and I'm doing it for myself and I don't have to answer to anything and I can make myself happy in that way. Um, but not always. And so I just want to encourage you out there that it's not always a straight line to get a piece done, no matter how many times you see some artists do demos and stuff and we show things being kind of simple. Don't let it get you down and just keep plugging away and hopefully you'll find each individual piece's like voice and what you're trying to do there. Now let's take a look at just the major stages so you can see where this thing traveled from and to. Here's the original shitty Instagram picture from way back when, and that's why it's super low res and covered in noise. And then here is that kind of midpoint where I actually posted it on Instagram before I did like last minute changes. And then here is the current version uh, with a bunch of adjustments and stuff. Not saying it's perfect, but at least it's something that I feel like I can post and be pretty happy with. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting like. If you're not already subscribed, please do that. Share this with your friends, it really helps. And uh, see you on the next video. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.